This is going to be a video on removing the cat from the muffler on my 2020 Honda Talon. The quick rundown of the mods. I have the Jackson Turbo already installed. I put on a air fuel ratio gauge already. I have a boost gauge and a fuel pressure gauge that I haven't fully installed yet. I'm going to be building a dash for that. You can see I mounted my air fuel ratio gauge over there. I'm going to be putting fuel pressure gauge and air uh, fuel pressure and boost gauge on the dash there. I'm going to build a bracket and whatnot to mount it. I've got about 1,200 miles on this um, aftermarket wheels and tires. Shock therapy springs with crossovers. Um, obviously, windshield mirrors, mud flaps. Haven't done much else to it other than run it. Did put a winch on it. KFI, 5,000 pound assault winch. Haven't had any issues with any of these mods yet other than the beadlocks losing air in the cold weather which is pretty normal. Gonna be making a video on taking them apart, cleaning the beads out and making sure that they're sealed up good in the future. But today is gonna be the exhaust. I've had it off before to weld the bung in for the air fuel ratio wideband O2 sensor. I uh, bought a TIG welder just to do this stuff. Well, to start off, to get in the exhaust off, it's pretty easy on these. You've just got your two bolts on your flange. Unhook, of course with me, I have two O2 sensors to unhook. And then you just have your two rubber brackets on the exhaust, which uh, I have found the easiest way to get them off is just to spray some lube on them and take a screwdriver or a small pry bar and just pry it right off and then the whole exhaust will be off and then what we're going to do is look in from the other end take off the uh, exhaust tip and take some peeks inside and see what the cat looks like in there if we can see it at all because I'm not sure exactly what it looks like inside I just know there's a cat in it and we'll either cut this end off or the other end off depending on where it's located and look what looks like the best access. We will uh, cut the welds, pull it open, gut it out, and weld her back together. And then throw her on and uh, see what she uh, sounds like. And actually, right now, let's see what it sounds like in here. With the turbo on, it quieted down the machine a lot. was never a very noisy machine when I added the turbo it got super quiet you can hear the turbo very well and the blow off valve or recirculation valve whatever you want to call it okay so now I've got the exhaust off um, it's funny I only ran it for a few minutes look at the amount of water in the exhaust I went through a lot of air uh, wideband O2 sensors when I first installed the system and I installed it pretty correct on the upper side on an angle where it's not supposed to get any water on it um, and I, I use just the AEM uh, wideband system and uh, I went through a lot of sensors in the beginning and I thought it might have just been the crappy sensors like off Amazon or eBay um, not being able to handle it and then I did some research and found that uh, having it powered up with the key power that controller that's in the gauge turns that wideband sensor on right away and that's before all the water has evaporated or been pushed out of the system 
So I suspect that my sensors were going bad because of how wet it is in that system and it was coming on too soon and heating up and then the water hits it when I hit the gas blows the sensor. I think I've been through four sensors in one summer. Uh, the most recent sensor I bought was for a I, I cross-referenced the number I will find it and we'll, we'll discuss that at a later time but it's for a car at your local auto parts store it was a little bit more expensive of a sensor, but it has lasted several weeks now without any glitches at all. Um, but so we definitely have a lot of water in that system when it's cold. We need to address that. And I hope getting the cat out will give it a little more flow. Now, I have the muffler off. I have the exhaust out of it. The tailpipe is out. It's going to be really difficult to see, but there is no, nothing that you can see because it's just a channel inside. You're probably not going to be able to see anything. I need to get a better light. So I just spent an hour cutting with a cutoff wheel to get the muffler apart, to get the cat out of the muffler. Here is what we have. It was just a very small cat that you had to cut six welds plus the end cap weld all the way around. It was kind of a pain in the butt. It took about an hour, one disc on the cutoff wheel, not a big deal. But that's what the cat looks like. It's kind of small. It's only in the end of the pipe. And there's like a baffle around the back side of it that doesn't make a lot of sense other than maybe like a resonator section. So now I have to come up with a decision of do I just take and chop this off, run straight pipe into the end of the muffler, or do I just knock the cat out and run it that way? I'm thinking I'm just going to cut it off right here in this area and if there's any bit of a cat left in there knock it out to get the full chamber. It looks like it's going to be easy enough to weld back together because it's got the, uh, the plug welds all the way around. Um, plus that, I, I, I don't think it's going to be a big deal at all. Um, kind of funny to see how small the cat is. I, after seeing a K&M one, I expected it to be a little bit bigger. But uh, it's tiny. But what I will say is that there it was a ton of water in my exhaust. The condensation is ridiculous. Now it fully explains why I'm going through so many wideband O2 sensors because it's powered up and heated up as soon as I turn the key on and it's probably shock loading the tips when that water hits them. So I need to hook up either a toggle switch to power my wideband so I can warm the machine up and then turn the wideband on or Something like that for any of you using the AEM wideband. This is the one I replaced it with. Seems to be working very well. A Bosch original. I don't remember what car it was designed for, but uh, it's the same wideband with a different yet yeah, with a different length cord on it. Basically, is the only difference, um, and it, it has been working very well compared to the last three to four that I've had in it, including the original one that was quite expensive. Um, I haven't, I've had th two of them were AEM originals. They last, one of them lasted 10 minutes, the other one lasted about a week. Well, did the whole job. the entire cat. Not very big. And I don't see
see where it's going to be too much of a restriction. But. So removed out of the muffler is the cat and this baffle that was held that held the cat in place. If I was going to do this job again, I would remove the muffler and put it in a bandsaw and cut it right on the weld. Cut the end of it off and then you can go over inside, remove the cat and then just weld it back on. It was a real pain in the butt getting the parts that were holding it together off because it was plug welded all the way around in six spots. So my advice, if you really want to remove it, which I don't really see a reason to after seeing how it was built, is to stick it in a bandsaw. Another quick side note, the uh, catalytic converter, if you were thinking about this stuff being a restriction in the pipe, I'm sure it is a little bit, but that is bigger than the pipe going in. It uh, Inside the muffler, it comes from like say a two inch to two and a half to two and three quarter. I haven't measured it. Oh, here's a tape measure right here. Let's check. Three and a quarter inch OD cat and the pipe going in is nowhere near that. I don't know what it is. Does, irrelevant but it's smaller. So they did try to compensate for the flow restriction.